Hello everyone, bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for November 2022 today. Just a little caveat at the start here, I do have a bit of a cold at the moment, so sorry if my voice is somewhat affected. And also, apologies if there's a little bit of choppy editing, if I start coughing or sneezing or anything, obviously that'll be edited out. So just to explain why that might be the case during the video. The topic, of course, we're going to be talking about today, as usual, picked via a poll over on Patreon. And the topic that came up at the top of the poll this month is the kit of a New Zealand infantryman serving in Vietnam late in the war and that's what we're going to be looking at on the mannequin here. So without further ado we'll get into looking at this kit and we'll start at the top as we normally do. We have here the, this is an Australian made jungle hat, very similar generally speaking to the, the British jungle hat which have been issued to New Zealand and Australian troops serving in Borneo and of course in Malaya prior to the Vietnam War. This was Australia's modification of that design. The brim comes down at a slightly sharper angle and you have eyelets in the side there with no mesh or anything over them as opposed to the slightly larger meshed eyelets that we used on the British hat. That's one of the ways you can distinguish these. So we have that the Australian, uh, in this particular instance, Australian made jungle hat as you can see. The basic uniform consists of what was colloquially referred to as pixie or twiggy greens and this is the New Zealand made example of the shirt from that uniform. It was an improvement over, or supposed to be an improvement over, the existing Australian greens, which were also issued to New Zealand troops to some degree as well, and had angle pockets on the chest here, as you can see. There are no lower pockets, but this is designed really to be worn untucked to give a little bit of extra ventilation. There are arm pockets. It was basically supposed to be a, a more up-to-date, more modern uniform, and that's what we have on the mannequin here, indicative of, of later Vietnam War service, this particular shirt being dated 1969. The equipment is a real mishmash of various different components. Both Australian and New Zealand troops used 1944 pattern equipment to some degree. It does turn up in use with both Australian and New Zealand troops, but New Zealand troops, it's far more common to see the photographs with them having 1944 pattern equipment added onto their equipment. Australians tended to make more use of 1937 pattern components. So as I say, we'll see there's quite a lot of 1944 pattern kit on the equipment here added on and that's very common to see with New Zealand troops in Vietnam. The basic equipment, the, the suspenders and belt are 90, M1956, so these are US items or US derived items. The suspenders are US issue, the belt is Australian, but obviously completely compatible. The ammunition pouches are both 1944 pattern and these are the second issue version of these. They have a belt loop high up on the back, which means they can be easily slung low on the belt as we have them here. And they give a much greater carrying capacity than the, the standard M1956 pouches, obviously the American design, or the enlarged Australian version as well. They, they give greater carrying capacity than, than either of those alternatives. And we'll see that in a minute as we move this round. And carried on the back is a second issue, 1944 pattern haversack. I'm mentioning that now just so we can talk about the way that's carried on the back. You have the L straps from that just hooked over the shoulders here, just looped over the shoulders. They're not hooked into the pouches at all, as you can see, literally just looped over the shoulders and it's been carried as a backpack basically without being hooked into the equipment. So that's the basic equipment set here, as you can see. We'll start moving this around now and talking about some of the other details. Looking at the right hand side of the mannequin here, you can see the side profile of the hat there with the two ventilation eyelets in the side. So you do have foliage loops running around the side there as well and the stitch brim is more visible there too. You can see here we have the arm of the, we have the arm pocket on the side of the, uh, or high up on the side of the arm here. I believe this is actually meant to be used as a dressing pocket. As you can see it's double pleated like the dressing pockets you would have seen on battle dress uniform preceding this. And you have a, a simple cuff design here with two buttons, allows it to be opened up nice and wide so these can be rolled up if required. If I lift the arm out of the way here, you can see a, a neat contrast between a US M1956 pouch and the, the size of the 1944 pattern pouches. You can see that here. Obviously mix and match here, again, a, an element of the US M1956 in use with the equipment. It's very possible this will be to carry grenades. It's something I've seen an extra pouch round on the hip. It's certainly in, in British practice, and I believe also in Australian and New Zealand practice, it was not common to carry grenades, particularly fragmentation grenades, on the equipment. They would be carried in pouches. So a pouch for them round on the hip there would make sense. And that's had the, the supporting strap removed, so it's just sat on the belt there. Uh, quite a convenient place to carry it. 
You can also see at the rear here the side profile of the second issue, 1944 Patton Haversack, the side pocket here with the twist lock on there, as you can see, and obviously the side profile of the main body of the Haversack there as well. We'll move this around now and have a look at that in some more detail on the back. So we have the 1944 Patton Haversack here, quite top heavy, so it does sag away from the body, but if I straighten this up a little bit here, you can see this one's been slightly hacked about. It's had the cross straps removed from the back here and the loop for carrying an entrenching tool removed as well to make it more of a smooth profile at the rear. Also means you only have to undo these straps to get in the main body as opposed to having to undo the uh, cross straps as well. So this one's been slightly modified. It's also had the lower straps removed as well. The reason for that, of course, is the back of the belt is covered in canteens or water bottles. So carrying a load under this wouldn't be very comfortable. It would interfere with these. These are carried in a way that doesn't really otherwise interfere with the haversack in that they are slung below the belt. So these use both Australian modified M1956 canteen covers, which have a strap and M1910 hooks higher up. And then we have one 1944 pattern carrier and bottle here as well. This is the later example with the rubber cap. So these all sit below the belt, meaning that the rucksack or haversack carried on the back doesn't interfere with them and a lot more comfortable from that point of view. Much as these do bounce around a bit slung from the bottom of the belt, it does mean that carrying a load on the back that comes down to belt level is comfortable and doesn't interfere with anything on the back of the belt. Obviously, the US forces would get around this by clipping all of the water bottles, all of their canteens to their, to their pack or the majority of them. Uh, whereas obviously in this setup here, you can carry them on the belt conveniently low down so they don't interfere with the load carried on the back. So you have a total of four canteens or water bottles around the back here, Australian and Australian cover, British 1944 pattern in a 1944 pattern cover, another Australian bottle or canteen in an Australian cover and the same round on the other hip round there as you can see. So looking at the left hand side of the mannequin there isn't a huge amount more to see here. You can see there is an arm pocket on the arm of the uniform here again with a squared off single button flap over that. Not a huge amount more to talk about there. And then if I lift the arm out of the way, you can just see the details of the web equipment here. You can see the final canteen, the fourth canteen round on the hip here. And then you have the 1944 pattern ammunition pouch, the left hand pouch here. These are handed because as you can see, there are loops on the side of that to carry a bayonet. Although if bayonets were carried, which we don't have in this instance, in Vietnam, you certainly tend to see them carried in a separate frog rather than making use of the loops on the side of the pouch where 1944 pattern pouches were used. And as I say, this is something that seeing this amount of 1944 pattern equipment in use in Vietnam alongside M1956 is something fairly peculiar to the New Zealand uh, contingent out there. Australians tend, you do see a bit of 1944 pattern, but certainly in terms of pouches and so forth, 1937 pattern is more common. So there we are. So hopefully you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, it's a real mishmash of components that you see in use by New Zealand troops in Vietnam, particularly later in the war, and a large amount of 1944 pattern equipment added on in many instances. And the New Zealand's clearly had uh, access to stocks of this, and particularly the later components, which were actually only introduced in the mid-1960s, wouldn't really show up in Borneo with British and, and Commonwealth troops there, but do show up in Vietnam. So it's an interesting point from that point of view. You see these later components, which don't really turn up elsewhere in use in Vietnam. Obviously, the New Zealand... Uh, pixie or twiggy green shirt is quite interesting to look at as well. I have made a separate video looking at this. Overall, I hope it's been interesting looking at this as Mannequin of the Month for this month. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you'd like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And of course, if you want to vote on the topic that's going to be covered each month, the Corporal Tier over on Patreon gives you the option to vote on exactly what's going to be covered. There's usually three options in the poll and you can vote on there. And the topic that comes top of the poll will be covered each month at Mannequin of the Month. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, where there will of course be photographs of this posted up, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down below as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.